Do you remember that video in which I said, oh, I am so happy that we are back to normal life. Well, guys, I spoke too fast. So I think this year it's either gonna be no sailing or some of the most sailing we've ever done and nothing in between. In 2018, when Ryan and I left Stockholm to go on our sailing adventure, we went first to the Med and we sailed 2,500 nautical miles that year. In 2019, we did a circuit around the Western Med before crossing the Atlantic and sailed 6,000 nautical miles. In 2020, we managed to go from Martinique to Saint Martin before the coronavirus became a reality. And in June, in a desperate attempt to leave the Caribbean amidst the pandemic, we sailed from Saint Martin to Curaçao, clocking our 700 nautical miles that year before returning to Sweden because our experience of lockdown on a sailboat was not a good one. I made a video on the topic last year. Eventually, after six months in Sweden, we missed our boat so much and we realized that we wanted to return, which we did. And so far in 2021, we have sailed 50 nautical miles. At this moment, we had planned to be in the Bahamas already. We are currently stationed in Bonaire, where we did not intend on spending so much time. So today I want to talk about how cruising looks like in 2021, the limitations that we are facing, plans for hurricane season 2021, and also how life looks like right now in Bonaire, because... <sighs> Do you remember that video in which I said, oh, I am so happy that we are back to normal life. Well, guys, I spoke too fast. But before we do that, we're gonna go out for a sail because it's been such a long time that we've shaken out Polyseal sail and I just cannot wait. Look at our main sail again, our head sail. Because when we came to Bonaire, it was, it, was not, it, was not a, it was not an amazing sail, so. Uh... So we're about to go out sailing and we realized our Swedish flag is a bit ratty so we're gonna replace it but we get a lot of questions on this channel of why do we fly the swedish flag on our boat i'm american by birth and have a u.s passport sophie is french by both birth and has a french passport we met in sweden 10 years ago no ryan that was six years ago oh yeah. sorry yeah we met in sweden six years ago but we both lived in sweden for about 10 11 years now so we actually are both Swedish citizens as well. So we both carry a Swedish passport and we're really proud of that. And we're, we love flying the Swedish flag behind our boat. This is our second or third Swedish flag. I think this boat? is our third Swedish third? flag. Third or fourth? Fourth, because the sun really beats it up and so does the wind. How's that look? It's a bit of a difference. A bit of a difference. There we go. Magnificent. What you see all the way back there is a salt factory. It's called the Salt Pier and it's said to be an amazing dive spot, which we shall check out. You wouldn't know it by watching this video, but Bonaire is currently on level six alert, which is the absolute highest on the island. Bonaire is an island of 20,000 inhabitants. And when we arrived at the end of January, there was only 11 cases and almost no restrictions. A couple of weeks ago, we started noticing the numbers going up at a way faster pace. And it was confirmed that new strains of the coronavirus had sadly made their way to the island. On the day that I'm recording this video, there are currently 450 cases of coronavirus on the island. Yesterday, half of the tests that came back, came back positive. And the government estimates that there are probably three times the amount of cases on the island than the amount of cases that is recorded. Needless to say, the situation is not good. Ryan and I do not go on shore. We only go on shore to go to the store. 
But the lockdown here looks a lot different than what we experienced in St. Martin a year ago. One of the things that we are allowed to do is to go out for a day sail. Bonaire is a particular cruising destination because it is impossible to anchor anywhere overnight on the island. But the day sail possibilities are almost endless. All around the west side of the island, there are yellow mooring buoys where it is possible to moor for the day and go for some snorkeling, diving, or a short excursion on land before returning to our actual mooring buoy. So we made our way to Klein Bonaire, a small inhabited island right behind our mooring buoy that is the perfect spot to find isolation for a day. I have to say, Ryan, this sail compensates for the shitty sail that we had coming here. It's a pretty nice sail. Very today. nice. I think it's going to be a little into the wind on the way home, but it's all right. Last year's lockdown in St. Martin left us effectively locked in our boat for about three months. We were stuck in a dirty inland lagoon with no means to escape. Changing anchorage was neither allowed nor possible, and swimming behind our boat was neither allowed or attractive. The situation in the entire ABC Islands is sadly way, way worse than a year ago, but we feel grateful for the sensible measures that the authorities have taken and for our ability to continue sailing, swimming, snorkeling, and diving. So while we are very sad for what is happening around us on land, we feel a lot more hopeful than last year. And more importantly, we feel a lot more free. On a much more fun note, the silico anti fouling that Ryan applied two months ago seems to be working great. We haven't really cleaned the hull, and the little growth that you see goes away at the wipe of a hand. That's success. <laughs> yeah, Oops! Oh, it's a bit rolly! Alright. Should we get going? Do you want to go? Yeah, we probably should start moving back. All right. You want to take us off the, off the boy? Yeah. I mean, no, I'll take us off the boy. I mean, uh, literally. Woo! Bye, Klein Bonaire. We shall be back. We really wanted to stay on our mooring buoy and enjoy the day a little bit longer, but unfortunately, the realities of life came back to hit us like a frying pan in our face. Because of the lockdown and our own laziness, well, uh, mostly our own laziness, we had accumulated about three weeks worth of laundry that urgently needed to get done. And because we had to go to a laundry place that was closing at six, uh, we needed to get back before 3.30. Because guys, there is only so much underwear that I can hand wash. Um, I'll, I'll be honest. What do we think of the bikini PFD look? It's very nice. Yeah? Yeah. That's clickbait. commence. I have this big backpack behind me and this big IKEA bag and I'm gonna be going alone. So when it comes to doing the laundry, this has been the story of our lives for the last three years since we moved on board Polisil and started sailing around the world. Um, we never know what we are going to find in the places that we visit. We don't know if there is going to be a washing machine, if the washing machine is going to be good, is there going to be a dryer, no dryer, how far is it going to be? Are we going to need to uh, walk two kilometers and climb a massive hill with those 20-25 kilos of dirty laundry? As it's been the case in Menorca, we have done that. We don't know how much it's going to cost, it is an absolute 
lottery. So I remember one time we were just arriving in Mallorca after a few weeks spent between Formentera and Ibiza. In Formentera and Ibiza we were only anchoring and we were anchoring in remote places. So we had no access to laundry. We were hand washing underwear. I was, it was getting bad. But our only option to do the laundry was the super yacht service. And so it was really nice. We dropped everything off and uh, everything gets back to us folded and smelled nice. It was great. $80, yeah, $80 a round of laundry. To this day, I think it is the most that we spent on laundry at once. Uh, but that's it. You know, sometimes you just don't have the choice. You take what you have. And here in Bonaire, it just so happens that laundry is quite far away. In the meantime, I have just arrived at the laundries. My shoulders are absolutely destroyed. Whew. Oh, it's gonna be nice to sleep in clean sheets tonight. Put the mask on. Uh, how do I look? Oh. No. No. This is supposed to be open. No. <laughs> oh, Ah, f me. That sucks. Well, guys, this sucks. 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 Ah, I'm not happy. Not happy. Uh. We've had laundry fails before, like this one time where we showed up to this laundromat and washed all of our laundry at once, the uh, full 20 kilos, before realizing that uh, their dryer was broken. And so we had to go back to our boat with 20 kilos of wet laundry, which obviously when you live on the boat is not ideal. Um, this was another one. Big laundry fail. So guys, if you are watching this video because you are yourself planning to sail around the world, do yourself a favor, buy a washing machine. You will thank me, I promise you. Oh, oh what a beautiful waste of my time. Ah, oh, wonderful. <laughs> Yay. I need that tonight. Cheers, guys. Mm. Nice. So in the series Corona Strikes Again, our lovely Norwegian neighbors were bound to Curacao on Wednesday and they took their PCR test today. They paid $300 for their test and uh, right after that Curacao announced that it was going on absolute full lockdown on Wednesday and while the border remained open they were gonna go there to have their boat hold out at the yard and the yard informed them that they were not gonna hold boats anymore. So they're staying here. So what's your take Ryan? Because we have been talking about our sailing plans this year for quite a while and we were not really supposed to be here right now. No, so I think this year it's either going to be no sailing or some of the most sailing we've ever done and nothing in between. 2021 has developed a lot differently than I thought and... Than anybody thought. I don't think that yeah. anyone was anticipating a third or a fourth yeah. wave. It's uh, way more, virus. so it's just things are not happening as fast as we thought. So we have three options, I think. We stay down here in the ABCs, uh, and maybe Colombia and Panama. It is a bit of sailing, but it's not much. Option two is to go up to Canada, which would be really nice to see for the summer. But, well, Canada's still closed, so we're not really sure we'll get there before hurricane season. And then the third option is to do an Atlantic Circuit, which is a lot. It's like 6,000, 6, 6,500 miles and I'd go to the Azores for the summer, Madeira for the fall, and then the Canaries for the winter and back here. It's a little bit hard because 
you know, last year when we moved back to Sweden temporarily, we were like, well, we're not going to go back to the boat if we end up in the same situation as last year. And here we are again. But I think that one of the big differences this year is that first off, we're in a place where we're safe. Last year, we were not safe for hurricane season at all. St. Martin was destroyed by Irma in 2017 and we were living surrounded by wrecks memories of that time you know we were doing night watches at night because we didn't feel safe in the anchorage but here we're safe Bonaire is quite out of the hurricane zone we don't feel that the locals particularly want to come and uh, steal on our boats it's actually quite the opposite we feel that the locals are really friendly towards people living on boats at least that's my <laughs> that's my feeling right now and it's genuinely nice being here i didn't find it very nice to be in saint martin last year where i felt constantly surveilled by the police and we needed paperwork in order to uh, even be out of our boat and the police started to enforce those ridiculous rules about having flares in your dinghy what else did they want on board oh and then wear your life jacket in the dinghy which <sighs> so the feeling this year is very different and then there is the vaccine which i cannot wait to get that brings me a lot of hope I think a lot of people are going through disruption still. One of our friends tonight said, you know, they should have just said at the beginning of this, a pandemic takes at least two years. I think if we would have gone into that with that mindset, we would have made decisions a lot differently. Yeah. I think everyone was just hopeful it would just blow over quick. What kind of other decisions do you think we would have made? No, I think I would have taken the boat back to Europe, which we talked about last year yeah. briefly. But I was just so like, oh, we've already got the Caribbean. This is just going to last a year. but. You know, if it's gonna last a few years, it would have just been better to go back. The Med has winter, but not necessarily like a hurricane season, even though there are periods of bad weather. There's a lot of liveaboard marinas for the winter, and I think we're pretty comfortable in those. Whereas down here, you really need to be out of the area. So on top of that, guys, one thing that we have talked about on our channel before is that I have problems getting into the United States. I don't have a visa. I am persona non grata. I do not even have ESTA, which means visa waivers privileges. And Ryan and I are actively working on this, but uh, it means that for the coming year, we will not be able to go to the United States. I cannot even transit through the United States, which limits our options a lot for hurricane season. It really feels like we're back to a year ago. So what do you think about hurricane season? We are open to any suggestion. We have, we have thought about it quite a bit. Uh, I think that what we should do is to invite you in this discussion for a live this weekend. What do you think, Ryan? Yeah, I think we should have a live this weekend because I'd be really interested in what our community thinks we should do for the hurricane season. But I also am having another live this weekend, which is called Office Hours with Ryan, and it will be our second one. And it's a time where we talk about different problems people are having on the boat, from technical problems to maybe buying boat problems to just general cruising lifestyle questions or problems you're having. Do you have problems in your relationship? Coach Ryan is here to help you. Yeah, I'm an everything. I'm a technical coach. I'm a relationship coach. No, I'm just joking. So Office Hours with Ryan is on Teams. We stay on the call for as long as we want. I chime in but i'm not really participating anyone in our patreon community can join you can join our patreon community for as little as two dollars a month so uh yeah join us it's um it's a fun little group there so what do you think ryan what's your favorite plan for hurricane season i don't know yet i i would like to go to the azores but it's a lot of sailing yeah it's a lot of sailing and that's like i like to sail but those ocean crosses, crossings get really long. It's pretty taxing. But if we had crew, uh, maybe it wouldn't be so bad. Like it was really fun crossing with Jules and Tenny. Mm -hmm.